Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. Let's begin by getting straight into the Word of God. Psalm 84 says this, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. What a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. It's so good to know that if we trust in him, we are blessed. That is the promise of his word. We're going to be praying together later on today. We're going to be praying for Ukraine as this awful war continues. And we're also going to be praying for persecuted Christians in the nation of Uzbekistan. Let me read to you from the World Watch List booklet what it has to say about living as a Christian in that nation. Uzbekistan is largely Muslim, so any Christian who converts from Islam faces increased pressure from their family and communities. They may be beaten or expelled from their communities. Women and girls are particularly vulnerable to house arrest which remains widely socially accepted. Christians and churches may be monitored by the government and church leaders are commonly targeted in order to spread fear. Typically, they will be fined, detained, denied exit visas to leave the country or put under house arrest. Please pray with us later as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Uzbekistan and of course for Ukraine. But let's turn our attention now to worshipping the Lord our God, our great and mighty King, the one who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We're going to sing a great chorus now. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. God bless you as we worship the Lord together today.
I'm reading from Acts chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Such a wonderful passage of scripture where Peter has to explain to the Jewish believers what God has been doing. Before this time, it was considered uh, wrong, according to the law of Moses, for a Jew to enter a Gentile's house, the house of a non-Jew. And yet God has expressly commanded Peter to go to the house of this man, Cornelius, who is a Roman centurion. He's not a Jew. And Peter has uh, received this vision from God where he's seen all sorts of animals which Jews were forbidden to eat let down on this, sh this sheet. And he said, I'm not going to eat that. that that's, that's impure. I'm, I'm a good Jew. I'm not going to do that. But God three times has said to him, do not call common what God has cleansed. Here is verse 9 of Acts 11. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This is really what I wish to speak about today. What God has cleansed, you must not call common common. The Gentiles were considered unclean by the Jews. They were considered common. They were considered outside of God's plan, outside of God's purpose. It was forbidden for Jews to associate with Gentiles and enter into their houses. And yet God sends Peter to Cornelius's house. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. God sends Peter to Cornelius's house and as he is still speaking the Holy Spirit falls upon these men and they begin to speak in other tongues as the apostles as the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Listen it was not up to Peter to decide whether they were saved or not. It was not up to Peter to decide whether they were clean or not. It was up to God and God comes the Holy Spirit falls upon these men. The glory of God fills their lives and they begin to speak in other tongues just like the disciples on the day of Pentecost. It was God who made that decision to save the Gentiles. You know, so often we can look at people, we can look at situations, we can look at 
people's circumstances. We can look at their backgrounds. We can look even at what denomination they're from. We can look at who they associate with. We can look at who they've been brought up by. And we, in our hearts, make a decision. Well, they might not really be Christians. It's not up to us to make that decision. It is up to God. If God has placed the Holy Spirit within them, then God himself has declared them clean. It was God himself who, when Solomon dedicated the temple, after he had offered thousands of sacrifices, God himself decreed that this was a place where he would make his dwelling on earth and the glory of God filled the temple so that those who were ministering were unable to continue a ministering because they were on their faces before God as his glory filled the temple. It was God who made that decision that the temple was his dwelling place. Later on, the temple became corrupt. Worship in the temple became corrupted. And so we see in the book of Ezekiel, a vision of the glory of God leaving the temple because God declared this was no longer a place where he would allow his glory to reside. But listen, if God decides that somebody is clean and God decides to make his dwelling in that person, it is not for us to make any human distinction. We are to accept what God has said, we are to declare clean what God has called clean. We are not to declare unclean anyone that God has called clean. Whatever their background, whatever their temperament, whatever their learning, whatever their upbringing, whatever their colour, whatever their previous faith, we have no right to declare them unclean if God has called them clean. God has made a way for people to be clean. It is through the blood of Jesus. But you know, the problem also comes when you see believers who are going through life desperately trying to deal with guilty consciences, deal with things in their past, and they're thinking, well, I know God's accepted me into the kingdom, but I've still got all this stuff to deal with, and I'm such a bad person, and I'm such a wretch, and they never live in the freedom, they never live in the abundant life that Jesus came to give. And I want to give you reassurance today. If you are one of those Christians, if you are saying what I did in the past was so bad, I thank God for saving me, but I'm still dealing with it. I want to reassure you today. First of all, turn please to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Notice that past tense. Such were some of you. God says you are not that thing anymore. But you were washed. You were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Then turn please to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5 where the apostle writes, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Not some sin, not just the little sins, not just the sins that we think God would cope with. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Why do you need to be going around weighed down with the burden of a guilty conscience if you have come to Christ, if you have received forgiveness of sins? You are free from that sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
And so we have a confidence in approaching God because we are no longer sinners. You know, in the Old Testament, there was only one person who could enter into the presence of God. That was on the Day of Atonement. The high priest would enter in having made sacrifices. He would enter into the Holy of Holies, which was separated from the rest of the temple, separated from the rest of the world by a, by a thick curtain. And no man was allowed to go in there except the high priest on the day of atonement. But he had to go in with the blood of the sacrifice. And if the blood of the sacrifice was accepted, then the people of Israel would know God's blessing for another year. They would know his protection from enemies for another year. But it was only one man who was able to enter in once a year and he had to present that blood. That blood had to be accepted. But we have been brought in to the kingdom of heaven through the blood of Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven and he entered in to the holy of holies in heaven. And he presented his own blood before the heavenly father. And the heavenly father declares this blood, the blood of Jesus' sacrifice is eternally acceptable. And those who enter in by the blood of Jesus Christ will not be consumed because of their sin. Because the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We have been given boldness. We have been given access to our heavenly father in Christ Jesus. Turn please to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 where it says this. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. We have our consciences cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Our consciences are cleansed from dead works so that we may serve the living God. And then just going on a chapter to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We may come boldly before God, our hearts are cleansed by the blood of Jesus and therefore we have boldness to approach. Are you getting the message? If you are born again, you are washed clean. You have confidence before God. You don't need to come before God worried about your guilty conscience. God says your sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. He throws them as far away from you as the east is from the west. He remembers them no more. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has not just covered your sin. It ha has removed it once and for all. That is good news. But then when we hear this, we need then to be sure of what voice we're listening to. I would like you to turn, please, to the book of Zechariah and chapter three. This is one of the voices that unless we're careful, we find ourselves listening to. And it's the voice of the devil, the voice of Satan, the voice of the accuser of the brethren. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. 
And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. I want you to notice something from the moment the Lord says, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. You never hear Satan's voice again in this passage. Joshua never hears Satan's voice again in this passage because the Lord says, This is a brand plucked from the fire. God says, This one is clean and I'm taking the filthy garments off and I'm giving him clean robes. Praise God for those who believe in Jesus Christ. He has taken away those old, filthy, wretched, sinful garments that we wore and he has clothed those who believe in him with the most glorious robes of righteousness. That is right standing before God. That is in complete accord with divine and moral law. Robes of righteousness. Don't listen to the voice of the accuser. He will try to remind you of stuff that you have done. But if you have confessed your sin before God, he has cleansed you by the blood of the lamb. You need not hear the voice of the accuser again because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And now please turn to Luke chapter 7. One of the voices we need to be sure we're not listening to anymore, the voice of Satan. But there's another voice we mustn't be listening to anymore. Luke 7 and verse 36 says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. You know, there's another voice we must not listen to. That is the voice of religious legalism. Religious legalism was, will always try to pin you as to the person you used to be. But when we come to Jesus Christ, something wonderful happens. We don't have to listen to that voice of religious legalism anymore. And further down, Jesus silences that voice of religious legalism when he addresses Simon the Pharisee. He says in verse 46, you did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. The voice of religious legalism is silenced. There's another voice that this woman hears. It is the voice of Jesus declaring your sins are forgiven. This woman had a choice of which voice to listen to. Joshua had a voice of which a choice of which voice to listen to. Was Joshua going to listen to the voice of the devil or the voice of God? Was this woman going to listen to the voice of religious legalism or was she going to listen to the voice of the one who declares her forgiven? I know which voice I choose to listen to. It's the voice of Jesus. It's the voice of him who hung upon the cross, bleeding, dying for my sin, saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's the voice of him who says, my blood provides cleansing for all your sin. Your sins are forgiven as you follow me. And then there's another voice which so many people still listen to. And it's their own voice. It's their own voice that is saying, I'm still not good enough. It's their own voice that's saying, I don't know how God puts up with me. It's their own voice that's saying, I'm still a wretch. Stop listening to that voice. Listen to the voice of Jesus. Your voice is telling you that even though you're saved, there's still stuff you need to be forgiven from. When you are saved, you are born again of the Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. So let me ask you today, whose voice are you listening to? The devil's? Religious legalism? Or your own untruths? 
There's only one person who can declare you clean or unclean. His name is God Almighty. And for those who are in Christ Jesus, the voice of God resounds down through history. The voice of God resounds forever. Forgiven. 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 Clean. 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 The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. All glory. All honour. All praise. Be to God. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus, knowing that it is only through the blood of Christ that we have any right to approach you. Lord, we thank you for the grace that you give us in prayer today. And we thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word that whoever asks anything according to your will, it will be given. So, Father, we do pray today for believers in Uzbekistan. Father, we pray for everyone who has been displaced from their communities, that, Lord, you would enable them to rebuild their lives, that you would enable them to grow and to prosper wherever they are. Father, we pray particularly for church leaders in that nation, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them strength, that you would give them the ability to continue doing what they do, reaching the lost with your love, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for those who are already in prison, that you would help them and be with them as they spend that time in jail. Lord, we pray that you would arrange their release. And Lord, we pray that you would soften the heart of the Uzbekistan government, that, Lord, they would change any laws that are giving ease to persecution, that they would actually toughen up on persecution. They would say, this must stop. And, Lord, we pray that you would continue to strengthen every believer in that nation, that you would enable them to stand strong, to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus, and that you would enable them to stay true, even in the middle of what they're going through. We pray you would bless them. We pray you would protect them. We pray you would preserve their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would give them boldness in witness. Help them, Lord, we pray. And Father, we pray for Ukraine. Lord, this war has gone on too long already. First, Lord, it's, it's already going out of the main headlines. It's almost becoming a forgotten war in some ways. Lord, I pray that that would not be the case. I pray, Lord, that you would keep Ukraine at the forefront of news headlines, that you would keep it in people's awareness, and particularly the plight of the refugees, Lord. I thank you for all of the help and support that was given to refugees in the early stages, but Lord, let them not be forgotten. Lord, would you ensure that the supplies the aid, the food, the medicine, the clothing, everything they need would get to them. That those who have moved to other countries, that Lord, you would give them places to stay, places to live and enable them to rebuild their lives. And Lord, we pray that this war would come to a speedy end, that innocent lives would be saved. Lord, we pray for everyone who's lost a loved one. We pray for everyone who has been brutalized. We pray for everyone who has been tortured, every woman who has been raped. Lord, we pray that you would help them to rebuild their lives, that they would know your love, your compassion, your strength. Lord, we pray as well for the people of Russia. Lord, we pray that everyone who has lost loved ones in the war again would know your comfort and your peace but we pray that the people of russia would come to realize what is truly going on and turn against this war that there would be peace we ask it in the name of jesus amen amen 
Thank you for praying with us today. Please continue to keep praying for believers in Uzbekistan and for Ukraine. It's been great to be with you today. It's been great to have you with us. And I pray that you will be blessed in this coming week. Remember, if there's anything at all that has uh, spoken into your heart today, if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, if you want to know more about what it is to be a Christian, then please just get in touch. The contact details are in the details below for this video and the uh, website address is on the screen at the end. If you're anywhere in Clevedon or the Clevedon area, we meet at the community center in Clevedon on Prince's Road at 10.30 every morning. If you're not in Clevedon, if you're further afield, then don't forget, we're back on YouTube every week at 10 a.m. That's UK time, or you can watch it on Catch Up later on. So until next week, may God bless you and may God keep you. God bless you. Bye-bye.